All right, so welcome to the first episode of the hands-on portion of how to set up a home lab. My name is Abe. I am your host here at Learn to Home Lab uh, for this specific series of our course. So what we're going to do in this episode is open sense. So what you see in the red box, which is a firewall. So this is going to be our topology throughout this series essentially starting from the top down, right? So you have the public internet, and then we have our firewall coming into our house where our home lab network will start. Now, all this stuff will be linked below. Please go out and check our website um, because it will have screenshot and hands-on or step-by-step -step tutorials walking you through all of these videos if you ever get confused or you need to move a little bit slow i find some things to read when you read them to be easier to understand and some things when you watch them to be easier to understand so we are trying to create an all in conclusive or inclusive um environment and learning experience for free for you guys to watch and to get that hands-on experience you need to get your first IT job or maybe your next IT job where you can speak to some things that you've done in your home lab. So now that that's covered, all the links for everything will be down below, but you need to download three things and have a USB drive for this. So the first thing you need to download is 7-Zip. For whatever reason, when you use OpenSense, it does not like to um, decompile or extract uh, the files from the zip folder. When you right click on it, click extract all, it's going to fail. You need 7-zip to do that for whatever reason. And then we're going to use Etcher that will allow us to create a bootable USB drive that we then flash our OpenSense software onto our firewall device with. Once again, if you haven't watched the first episode, go back and watch that because I cover options that you can use um, to do this. And then lastly, you need to go download OpenSense, the actual firewall software itself. We will go into more detail in later episodes. This is just getting installed and set up so you have internet access again. All right. And then real quick, architecture, DVD, and then wherever your closest mirror location is, you can change to based on where you are in the world, where you're watching this. Um, go ahead and do that. And then once those are downloaded, you can install 7-Zip and Etcher and then come back to this video. So go ahead and pause and do that. All right, so now that you have Etcher and 7-Zip downloaded, we need to, and OpenSense, I should say, but those installed, we are need to check the integrity of this file. So you can just click your Windows key, type in PowerShell, and click Enter, and we will be presented with a um, PowerShell command line, right? And we want to check the integrity of the file that we downloaded, right? So it will be in a zipped format for you guys still um, right here. And then we need to check that. So what is a hash? A hash verifies the integrity of a file, meaning between the mere location where you requested the download from and when it landed on your computer, we want to ensure there's no man in the middle attacks, no Trojans or no malicious software was implemented into that zip package that would then create a backdoor or be detrimental to the networks or to your network's security. So you go, well, how do I do that? Google is going to be your friend when doing IT and I would scream AI, AI, AI. Ask ChatGPT, ask Perplexity. You can get questions answered to help you solve issues super fast versus digging through old form pages. Form pages in Reddit can be really helpful, but if you just need something quick and concise, AI is going to help you do a, a course like this. So more specifically, we need to grab this right here, right? This is going to be our bread and butter of verifying the integrity. So I'm just gonna copy this in here and if you're unfamiliar, when you copy off a website, you can right click in the command line and it will paste for you. You don't need to do control C because control C will leave or uh, will, you know, it will remove you out of a command box in the command line. You can also do control shift C in the command line and that will work as well, but I just right click. So the thing in here we need to get is the file path. How do we do that? Well. We have a couple clues, but the easiest way or the way at which I like to do it is I go to where my zip file is, I right click on it, and I select properties. And now here's all information. So where the file is downloaded is right in here. So I'm going to go over here using my arrow keys, back, or back space, whatever, right click again, 
and then add another backslash because that's what Windows uses. I'm going to grab the name of the file, right click again, and then I need to add that extension .bz2, which you can see right here, type of file because we're messing with a zip file. And then that is the full file path and we click enter and it grabs the hash for us and we can see that our hash matches the one on their website. So we have good integrity and we know there's no issues with this file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my Windows key and open up 7-zip, right? And we need to go to where that is stored. So in my case, I am user learn backslash downloads. And in our downloads folder, we can see the zip file. So you're gonna go ahead and select that and click extract. And then you'll just extract it here and click OK. And you're done. So go ahead and extract that and come back when it's done. All right, so now that that's done, we've done the integrity checks, we have everything we need. The last thing we need to do is flash the software to our USB drive. So you are going to go in here, flash from file, click open. Um, if it says missing partition table, that's fine. You can click continue, it'll format it for you. Select a target, click that USB drive that you have put in, and then click select and flash. So this may prompt you with a Windows command processor. That's fine. Click yes. And this is going to, uh, you know, install it as a bootable option on our USB drive. So go ahead and pause this video and come back when this is done. And we're going to plug this USB drive into our uh, Zima board that we're using for OpenSense for the purpose of this course and get to the portion of installing that. All right, so now that that is done, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this. So down here in the bottom right of Windows, we right click on our USB drive and click eject. And now it's safe to remove. So the other thing that you need to have ready as well is a keyboard plugged into your device. So in my case, I have a um, Bluetooth keyboard, a Logitech Let's see, K400R, if you want to grab one, it also has a mouse pad connected to it as well. Um, and then I'm going to take this USB drive and I'm going to plug it into that Zima board right there. And we're going to boot it. And when it's booting up, you're going to spam your escape and your delete key to get to the BIOS so we can boot to this device. And then let me move you guys over to our input and plug this in. All right, so I just plugged it in and I'm just spamming my escape and my delete key on my keyboard, waiting for this to boot. Okay, so now that this went straight to the BIOS after clicking that escape and the delete key, you are going to go over to your boot tab and you're going to go down to your boot options priority and enter on that. And then you can slick select, excuse me, from all your boot options. So we want, so we can see that our device is a SanDisk, right? And there's the SanDisk UEFI and just the normal SanDisk. You're going to want to click your UEFI for whatever USB drive you have, because that means bootable drive. And then just go to your save and exits tab, save changes and exit click yes and this will take us to open sense so we're going to go ahead and let this run through and once it does i'm going to come back to this video so go ahead and pause it until yours is at the login screen all righty so now we're at this login screen we are going to type installer for the username and open sense for the password opn s-e-n-s-e and we are going to take be taken to the installer. So we can click enter, install ZFS, that's fine. Click OK. And then this is going to probe, looking for a hard drive, SSD, whatever you got connected. All right. And so we're going to do striping, no redundancy. This is going to be for 99% of you. If for some reason you're running a raid on your firewall, good on you. You can click those if you know what that is. In our case, we are just gonna click this and we're gonna click our EMMC SD0, which is built into the Zima board as the place to install our OpenSense. 
And this is just a warning. It's going to destroy all the current contents on the disk. Are you okay with that? Yes, we are because this is going to be a purpose built firewall. Come on. Oh, maybe it's working. I'm just being impatient. It is working. All right. So this is going to go ahead and clone and come back to the video once yours has done so as well. All right. So we will change the root password in a little bit, but it is always best practice to do so. We are going to complete install, exit, and reboot. Now, the thing that you need to be aware of is when you're rebooting you need to remove the usb device from the uh, device at which you installed this on so i'm gonna click okay really quick let me move you over just so we transition and then i'm just going to click that okay and unplug this So now that that's rebooting, we're going to go back to that screen and we're going to see, oh, pager, read errors, blah, 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 VM fault. And I actually may have even pulled it a little too soon in the restart because I was, um, you know, looking at are trying to do all this record stuff. So it's gonna give a VM fault. So I'm just gonna actually unplug this and plug it back in. In the case you wanna wait a second when you see it during boot up, but what you're trying to do when you unplug it um, after you give it a second is to boot to the EMMC memory versus USB drive. So we can actually see that it's booting. And if I transition back, the USB is not plugged in. So it did successfully boot to OpenSense on the EMMC or the on, on hand memory storage, right, within the device, not the USB stick. So that's what you're essentially trying to do when you unplug it. So we can see that it's switching to those. And now we just need to wait. So come back once it is configured or it's at the loading screen. All right, so this is that screen that I was referring to, right? Um, in here, you will see that there is a WAN and a LAN. So the wide area network, which is going out to the internet, are coming in from your ISP, and then the LAN, the local area network, right? So there is not a WAN IP address that was resolved here because this is not connected to the internet because this is just a lab for the purpose of this course. Normally, if your I ISP or internet service provider does DHCP addressing, there will be an IP here and one here. If it's a static IP address, you will need to go in and assign this address. And you can do that by logging in with root, open sense as the password, clicking enter. And now we have these options. So we can see that we can set interface IP addresses by selecting number two and clicking enter clicking to again for the WAN address, and then just go through this prompt of essentially assigning the IP address. This asks if you wanna do DHCP or static. Once again, any capital letter is referring to the default option. So in this case, it's going to get it from DHCP. And you would just go through that process, all those questionnaires, and it would be assigned, and then it would compute it, and it would save it to your settings, and you would be good to go. Um, once again, 99.9% .9 of you are probably going to get it through DHCP and you will be good to go. So what we are going to actually do is now let me transition us over here and go to our browser again. And we're going to type in the IP address that we were presented with on that screen. So that's going to be this address right here 192.168.1.1 this will be true for all of you for the land side because um, 
that's just the default settings for OpenSense. Now remember, you have to do this on a computer that's plugged into a switch or your device directly over ethernet. This will not work over Wi-Fi. And then the username is root and that password is, whoops, open sense again and we're going to log in so now we're going to wait a second and we are presented with the initial setup wizard and we're going to click next and then in here we can switch the host name if you would like to set it to file or whatever um, that'll be all dandy and then in here you can set your primary dns and secondary dns servers i would recommend doing this because ISPs usually have reverse proxies that would do this, but they're slow. And I've never had good luck with them. And it's been quite annoying to be quite frank. So I'm gonna switch these to um, Cloudflares because they seem to be the fastest and Cloudflares kind of like the biggest content delivery network in the world. And so this will give you that content um, as quickly as possible. So those are Cloudflare's DNS IP addresses. You can go ahead and put those in and follow suit if you would like to. And then we're gonna click next. You're gonna put your time zone based on where you are currently, or where this really, where the fireball is sitting, right? If you're doing this remotely. And so I'm gonna go to America Denver for Mountain Standard Time and click next in here um, this is talking about the WAN interface right here at the top so if you want to set this to static you can if DHCP you can so you don't have to do it in the command prompt if you don't want to it can all be done here I would just wanted to show you both ways of doing that not really anything in here you need to change so we'll click next and then this will be your LAN network. So if you don't want to use this, you can Google public IP address ranges if you would like and switch this. Um, and then we're gonna leave this at a slash 24 subnet, essentially meaning that this last octet will have 254 usable IP addresses available to assign to computers within your local area network. And we'll click next, and this is the time at which you should change the password to your box. Because if you get hacked or somehow a malicious actor gets into your internal network through maybe a phishing attempt to your email, and now they're on the inside, and they can go to this web browser, log into your firewall, and create a backdoor for themselves, you have a big problem. And now it needs to apply all those changes, so it's gonna reload our firewall for us. All right, and we're done. So we're gonna just click continue to dashboard, and this is your dashboard. So this is where you'll keep your system up to date and you have a high level overview of what is offered within OpenSense. You can check for updates on this tab. Once again, this isn't connected to the internet, so that won't work, but that was is how you would update this system. Um, the biggest thing in here that I would say you could look at is like diagnosis or your log files if you need to. Where I find myself being in here a lot is either going to be in the firewalls tabs creating rules for like my LAN network or uh, your WAN network and then really services. So the biggest thing that I find myself going to is DHCP for IPv4 and then I go to my LAN and I can set settings in here, but really the leases tab. So any computer that's connected to your local area network will have an IP address. So this actually gave the computer that I'm recording this on, the I, this IP address, it gives you that this is an ASUS motherboard and this is the desktop host name that was presented. So that is just kind of a high level overview of this. We will dig into this more. But for now, your firewall has successfully been set up, beginning the series and your adventure of getting into the home lab world and probably spending absurd amount of money. But once again, this is for the fun and the betterment of your career. So stay tuned for the second episode where we will go over setting up Proxmox and your first server. Um, and the next episode, technically, we're going to just go over LAN switches, but we're not using a managed switch in this network. My name is Abe. Thank you for watching.